What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here and today we are going to be talking about the Glock 42 and why it sucks. Uh, this is a video series that I started with the M&P, if you want to check that out you can go take a look, it's one of my more popular videos currently so that's why I figured I'd do a pretty quick follow up. So I've been checking the internet recently and looking up a whole bunch of new stuff on the Glock 42 just to see what people's opinions are about the pistol. Now I've owned this pistol for a long time and I can tell you that I have certain gripes about it and there are a lot of things I really like about it. But I was looking on the web to try to see what other people thought of the pistol and today I want to talk about some of the more common complaints about the Glock 42 some that I think are valid and some that I think are absolutely not and I want to help you guys distinguish between the two. So if you go onto the forums right now and you look up let's say problems with the Glock 42 uh, first off you're gonna get a lot of opinions about people who probably have not owned or if they have owned haven't put a lot of rounds haven't put a lot of range time in with their Glock 42 they'll see one one issue about a Glock 42 that some overblown gun writer will write and they will just repeat that and repeat it and repeat it and so on and so on. Uh, there are problems with the Glock 42 and we're definitely going to talk about those but the majority of the hate that the Glock 42 gets I feel like is unjustified. The biggest complaint that I can think of about the Glock 42 starting off here is the fact that it, it was the wrong gun, right? You hear everybody say that, it was the wrong gun. Uh, it, this was a lot bigger complaint before the Glock 43 came out because what people wanted was they wanted a single stack 9mm. However, I don't necessarily think that opinion is valid. For one, they came out with a Glock 43 a year later and they solved that issue. Uh, the second thing is, is that I don't necessarily think the Glock 42 was designed for the tactical community in mind. Uh, most of the tactical community wanted a single stack 9mm so they could use it as either a backup gun or a beach gun or something like that. However, I think the Glock 42 was designed more in the line of, let's say, your grandma or your wife or maybe a first time shooter to get the lowest recoil and the smallest pistol possible while still maintaining controllability of the firearm so it's easier to use for novice shooters. Now, do I think if you were going to own one gun, 380 is the perfect choice? Uh, no, I don't. I, I really, really don't. If I, if I was going to own one of these two firearms here, I would have to go with the Glock 43, but the Glock 42 does hold a specific niche in my carry system. And as you can see here, right off the bat, that I have a SIG, a CAR, a Glock 42, and a Glock 43, and the Glock 42 and the Glock 43 are in holsters because I carry them, and they are also loaded. And the reason why they're loaded is because we're going to weigh them loaded to show the difference between the weights in a little bit. But I just wanted to show you the difference between these two pistols versus these two is I carry these two and I don't carry these two. So the problem with the 380 inherently, and three out of the four of these are 380, is that it's a smaller cartridge. Uh, it has less power. And there's other problems in lying with that as well. Uh, it, because it's less powerful, it has a habit of being less reliable it obviously is going to have a little bit less stopping power, although stopping power isn't really a thing in the first place. Shot placement, shot placement, shot placement. What they're really talking about when they're talking about stopping power, in my opinion, and this is my humble opinion, is penetration. It's easier to get lethal penetration with a 9mm than it is with a 380. It doesn't matter what ammunition you use. If you're using comparable ammunition, the 9mm will penetrate deeper. It will cause bigger wound cavities. It will kill the person faster. And if you're carrying a gun, let's be honest with ourselves, that is the idea, having to incapacitate the person if you absolutely have to, if your life is in danger. Uh, other problems with the 380 besides it being inherently less reliable is that it is also more expensive to shoot. Even though it is a smaller, weaker cartridge, it is more expensive to shoot than its 9mm counterpart. You will have less ammo to choose from, not much less, you get a good uh, selection for 380 but a little bit less. 
But if you feel like you want to carry 380 statistics are on your side, 99% of the people in the world are never going to have to use their gun in self-defense. And out of that 1%, 1% of those people will ever have to actually fire it. 99% of the time all you have to do is draw it, maybe even fire one or two rounds. You don't almost ever have to incapacitate the person completely to get them to go away. I know personally if you were to shoot me in the dick with a 380, I would either run or fall on the ground and cry. So for me, a 380 works in certain situations. And you also have to remember about the old 380 versus 9 millimeter kick is that 9 millimeter is also a compromise. Uh, 9 millimeter is not the go-to end-all perfect cartridge. If you know, if it were up to you and you could carry a 308 with no recoil in this package, yeah, we'd carry 308 because it'd drop them in in a much quicker time period than a 9 millimeter would. But everything's a compromise: size, weight, controllability, concealability. All those things that we talk about about all those things that we talk about about concealed carry guns all apply here as well. Uh, another complaint that the most people talk about is that it's too big to pocket carry. Yeah, I could see that. I really could. Uh, when I pocket carry a gun like the Car CW380 is a perfect size for pocket carry. Too bad it's uh, not my favorite gun in the world. If you watch any of my reviews on it, I don't really like it that much. This is my used to be my go-to pocket carry gun because it's a little bit smaller, it's a little bit shorter, but it is heavier than the Glock 42 as well. So I don't think that that I guess I do, and I don't think that that's valid because even though it's a little bit bigger, there's also a lot of pros to it being bigger. And when we get into controllability, you know, you think about your grandma shooting it. Uh, it's it's a bigger, firmer 380 than let's say the car. Let me take it out here and show you. Now, I have some rounds in the magazine for the weight test, but there's not one in the chamber here, and I'll show you that quick for all you safety Nazis. But uh, this is uh, Leahy Defense 380 plus P ammunition. It's the extreme penetrator round, because I think one of the biggest uh, drawbacks to Canon 380 is penetration. I want to make sure that I hit what I'm aiming at, and what that means is, is that if I aim at your heart and I shoot and it doesn't go through the breastbone, I'm not hitting what I'm aiming at. So I want to make sure I want to get that extra penetration. I think this does like 18 inches in gel. That is perfect for me for a 3D because you're not shooting through gel, you're shooting through bone, you're shooting through cloth, you're shooting through a barrier. He might be hiding behind uh, a, you know, a 2x4 or a, a drywall uh, wall or something like that. So make sure that your ammo does what you want it to. Make sure you're, you're uh, confident in your firearm as well. But getting back to it being too big, yeah, it's too big for pocket carry, and that does kind of suck. But what they did, instead of making it a pocket carry 380 like the car, is they gave you another option on the 380 market, which I think is kind of nice. If you want a pocket carry gun, you can go with the car, you can go with the SIG. If you want an inside the waistband, super thin, super lightweight uh, carry gun, you go with the Glock 43. So I don't think that opinion, I don't think that con is valid either. Uh, factory problems. Yeah, th this is a legit complaint. Uh, when they came out, the Glock 42 did have several issues. Uh, it had recalls. It's had, I think, two, three, four magazine recalls where they've changed the uh, the uh, the where they've changed the design of the magazines. I'm not even entirely sure what generation these are, but I haven't had that many issues with my Glock 42, although I have had some, and I will roll those into the video. I'm sure you've already seen a couple of them. They have changed that. Uh, they have changed the uh, slide stop. They have changed the trigger housing, and they've even marked some of the new frames. And most of those are marked with like a dash one or something like that. So if you want to know what generation your Glock 42 is to see if you need to send it in the Glock, uh, you can take a look and it'll either have a one in the frame or it won't, or it'll have a dash on the parts that I talked about or it won't. Uh, if you have no problems with it, if it were me, I wouldn't send it in. I didn't send it in mine. But if you feel like that's a concern of yours, yeah, definitely do it. I'm pretty sure they'll do it for free and I'm pretty sure they'll send it to you for free, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, the reliability issues stem further than the recall, however, because it is a 380, it will inherently be less reliable, in my opinion, than its 9mm counterparts, and I have found that to be proven in my own testing. The Glock 43, to me, is more reliable than the Glock 42. To be fair, though, the Glock 43 is more reliable than all of these pistols on the table. Uh, one quick thing, again, on reliability. The uh, ammo selection is a factor in the Glock 42. 
not necessarily a, Glock, a factor in the uh, Glock 43. I've never had any malfunctions at all ever in the Glock 43. I have had ammo related malfunctions in the Glock 42. I think some of that is because of the extra heavy spring that it has. I think that's to reduce the recoil but it also causes some reliability issues, this is my opinion. And the fact that it's a little harder to rack the slide, that's another big con that's legitimate. Uh, if you give either one of these two guns to your grandma here, this SIG P238, it's relatively easy to rack the slide, chamber around when she wants to load it in the morning and put it in her purse. The Glock 42, however, significantly more difficult, probably twice as difficult to rack the slide. Oh, well, it doesn't have a safety. Well, to me, that's not a con, that's actually a pro, and it's actually a lie. It does have a trigger safety, but to me, you know, you hear tactical guys talk about that. It's kind of a cop-out, right? I mean, it's, it's a trigger safety. It keeps the gun a little bit safer while you're carrying it, yes, and I really do like that. I do like the feature, but calling it a safety is kind of like calling a drop safety a safety. I mean, it does make the gun a little bit safer, but it's not what you would call a manual safety because you're going to press that anyway when you pull the trigger. So for me, it's a system that I really like. I do prefer it over the classic manual safety because I have a tendency to forget it to switch it on sometime. And I'd rather shoot the guy with my gun than beat him with it because I can't figure out why it doesn't work. So to me, I would prefer the no safety, but it does have a safety if you're getting technical. Uh, another con, it's striker fired. That to me is dumb. Uh, you can choose whichever gun you want. If you don't want a striker fired gun, don't fucking buy it. Uh, plus all other Glocks are striker fired, so I'm surprised that people were concerned about that. Uh, polymer, same thing. A lot of modern guns, including most of these on the table here, are polymer already. Especially with a carry gun, you want to you want to roll with a polymer gun because it makes the gun a little bit lighter. And in carry, for me, reliability is number one. Being comfortable is number two. If I don't have the gun on me, it doesn't really matter how good it is. Uh, grip angle, yeah, that's a complaint with all Glocks. It's kind of a silly grip angle. It kind of sucks that one of the most reliable lightweight pistols in the world has an off grip angle that you have to get used to every single time you shoot it. But the Glock 42, to me, it gives me less problems than almost any other Glock. For some reason, the grip angle just feels a little more natural. It feels like I can get a little bit higher purchase on the gun for some reason than I can normally get on other Glock pistols. So the grip angle thing to me, yeah, legit complaint, sort of. Get over it. Uh, you have to customize it to make it good. Yeah, that's true, and that's probably, to me personally, the biggest complaint that I have about the Glock 43, or about the Glock 42, because that kind of intros me into all the realistic problems that I want to talk about. Uh, you have to customize it to make it really good. You do. To me personally, the Glock 42 is my favorite 380 to carry, but would it be my favorite 380 to carry if I didn't do all the upgrades? Uh, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. I had to put a three-pound trigger connector in here, uh, if there were better trigger modifications available, I would have probably upgraded the trigger face and, and trigger shoe and stuff like that. Uh, I obviously upgraded the sights. The sights are a big issue with the Glock 42. I put these Ameriglows on here. I didn't think it had enough texture, so I put grip tape on it. So you see where I'm going with this, that it's got a lot of, uh, a lot of things ergonomically that I really needed to fix in order to really, really like it as a primary carry gun. And people would say, well, why did they put those on? And I think the main reason why they didn't put those on is because they're trying to look at their bottom line and they're trying to get a gun out to the common person so they can just use it whenever. And they don't want to up the price tag maybe putting features that the normal person wouldn't necessarily want. If I were to give this gun to my mom right now and I would tell her to shoot it, would she want to upgrade the sights? Uh, probably not, you know. She probably wouldn't care. She probably doesn't know there's upgradable sights. Uh, if I gave it to my dad, you know, maybe he would think about it, but probably not either, you know. Uh, us gun guys, you know, maybe guys that are watching this video, most most of those guys will want to upgrade the sights, trigger, things like that to get the best possible package out of your Glock 42, but the normal person doesn't want to do that, and they want a low bottom dollar, and the company wants a low bottom dollar so they can get more of these guns out in other people's hands. So that's one of the reasons why they did it. But me personally... I, uh, I would do those upgrades and I think that's a con of the pistol. 
Accuracy? Well, that's bullshit because it's one of the uh, most accurate 380s that I have. And the problems with pistols today, I think, with a lot of people, now there are some people that can outshoot their pistols, right? You know, you've got your Jerry Mitchell X and you've got your Taron Butlers and things like that. But for most people, uh, your pistol is accurate enough, you know? If you can shoot a target on a bench with a pistol at 100 yards, it's accurate enough, guys. Yeah, most people can't even hit a target with a pistol at 100 yards in the first place. So, do I think the Glock 42 is accurate? Absolutely. I mean, it's it's a it's a three inch barreled 380 subcompact, and I can show you footage of me hitting easily at 50 yards with it. So, is it it's more it's more accurate than it even needs to be for the uh, intended use of the actual firearm. So, I think that is also bullshit. Uh, magazine capacity is legit con. It only holds uh, six rounds of 380. So if you're going to carry this pistol, you may want to bring a backup magazine. Uh, revolver guys say that, you know, I carry five rounds of, of 38 Special or five rounds of 357 Magnum and you're only carrying six rounds of 380. Well, yeah, I get that, but I feel like the Glock 42 is a lower profile because it's thinner, you know, it doesn't have the revolving cylinder. That's just a personal preference of mine. Don't hate on me there, revolver guys. Also, it is significantly quicker to reload a semi-automatic pistol. So if you're going to carry a semi-automatic pistol, uh, one of the biggest, biggest, biggest pros of a semi-automatic pistol is that you can reload it quickly. So if you're not taking advantage of that function, maybe look into a J-frame, something like that. Now, we talked about the sights. We talked about the uh, spring being too heavy. We didn't talk about limp wristing. Uh, limp wristing is a bigger issue on the Glock 42 than most Glock pistols. You can limp wrist any Glock pistol, but I feel like for some reason the 380. Now I have a diagnosis problem, I probably should look into it a little bit more, but I feel like out of all the pistols that my wife has shot, she's probably limp wristed the Glock 42 the most and caused the most malfunctions. She doesn't have any issue with that with the SIG. Uh, we couldn't tell because the car had so many malfunctions, I don't know what the fuck caused it when we reviewed it, but the Glock 42 I could shoot 40 rounds out of it with no malfunctions, give it to my wife, she'd shoot 10 rounds and two of them would be malfunctions. So. You gotta watch out for that and you gotta make sure you use a strong shooting posture when shooting the Glock 42. Uh, grip texture is the last thing I wanna talk about. Uh, Glock thinks they upgraded the grip texture with the Gen 4 Glocks. Great job, uh, I still think it needs grip texture. Uh, most people don't like to use skateboard tape or anything like that on a carry gun because it'll rub on your stomach or on your back or something like that. I get that, I do. Uh, you know, that's a personal preference thing. I personally like to get out my gun and run it really, really quick, and I probably shoot my concealed carry pistols more than most people do. Uh, for sure, more than more than the average person. So I like to have grip tape on there because I like to, you know, send a lot of rounds in the range. I like to get really good with my carry pistol because I truly believe in being the best you possibly can with the gun that you carry. I think you should be better with the gun that you carry than any other gun you have because that's the gun that's most likely going to make the biggest difference in your life. Alright, so now we are going to weigh the Glock 42 versus the Glock 43, just so we can talk about some of the pros of carrying a 380. So we'll pop these out of the way really quick, put our dirty ass kitchen scale there, I don't know if you guys can see that, you can. And what I'm going to do here is not only am I going to weigh it with the loaded magazine, because 380 ammo is actually lighter than 9mm, I'm actually going to weigh it with my uh, G-code holster as well. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because this is the total package you're carrying, guys. I hate when other reviewers just weigh the pistols next to each other and they're like, whoa, you know, 380's a little bit lighter, but not a big deal. But it's not loaded, it's not the holster. There's more holster material to carry the bigger gun and the ammo weighs more, so we're gonna weigh it all together as a total package because this is what you're gonna be carrying. So we'll hit the Glock 42 first. We have one pound. 3.3 ounces, okay? Glock 43. One pound, eight ounces. So not a significant difference, believe it or not. It's about five and a half ounces, somewhere in there. Uh, whether that five and a half ounces is the breaking point for you is really up to you. Uh, most people say that you have to carry the biggest gun you possibly can, and it's your responsibility to carry all the time. Uh, I don't know if it is. Uh, if you really want to carry a pistol and it makes you feel more confident in your daily life, absolutely do it. If it makes you feel more confident you can protect your family, absolutely do it. That's the choice that I made. I want to be able to protect the, my family and the people around me 
in case something bad happens. And if I don't feel comfortable enough carrying a Glock 43, and I feel more comfortable carrying the Glock 42, by all means carry it. Having a smaller gun is better than not having any gun at all. Okay, go. In my final thoughts here, do I think it really sucks? No, I obviously don't. I do carry it, but I do think it's probably the least reliable Glock pistol on the market. So that's one thing to look out for. You know, some of the some of the complaints you'll see online are legit, but a lot of them are not, guys. And that's one thing that we're going to try to root out in this video series: which ones are legit and which ones aren't. And I think that you have to have some experience in pistols in general, and I think you have to have some experience with the actual pistol you're talking about to try to make judgments on these firearms before you just go on the forums and blab it all around. But, as I said before, some of the things you'll find on there are legit, and you'll find some good information as well. So, I hope you liked this video. If I forgot anything, uh, please leave it in the comments below. Uh, I usually do, and sometimes I can be wrong too, so if you disagree with me, also leave that in the comments below. Uh, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. It really keeps me going. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, please help your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle, because if you don't, my wife might find you and kill you. Just kidding. She'd probably yell at you, though.